We had ice. We had weird, screwy routing. But most importantly, we had a show. And we're back. I'm John Weiswasser, pilot and drummer for Eagle Mania. Follow me as I explore the practical use of general aviation while I travel the country with the world's greatest tribute to the Eagles. This is Life in the Fast Lane. This mission takes me from the Outer Banks of North Carolina, where I've been holed up for much of the quarantine period, to the Birchmere Theater in Alexandria, Virginia, for Eagle Mania's second appearance there. I'll use Manio Dare County Airport, which has been my new home base for the past months, a nice sized, occasionally controlled field, not far from First Flight and the Wright Brothers Monument. I needed to be at the Birchmere no later than 5 p.m. for sound check for a 7.30 show. This meant that I had to make a go, no go decision by noon, given that it was about a five hour drive from the Outer Banks. I opted to use Dulles Airport, a Class B that's very familiar to me and that I visited before on Fastlane. And while it's a Class B, it's much more laid back, has reasonable fuel and great services. So given that the 200 nautical miles would take about an hour, give or take, depending on routing and altitudes, I planned on leaving at 1230 local, which would give me plenty of time to get into position. We were without my drum tech that day, so I had to get there a little earlier to make sure my kit was set up correctly. Looking at the prog chart for the day, I knew I had to cross a relatively weak cold front and that there was the possibility of some weather aloft. Mitars that morning just showed some gusty winds. Mania would use runway five and Dulles would be landing to the north also, so it really wasn't a factor. This was all borne out in the respective tafts. Elizabeth City was the closest to Manio and all of them showed mildly gusty northwesterly winds and the possibility of showery activity, all pretty much consistent with the passage of the cold front. If I had to pick one thing that made this flight interesting, it was the decisions around icing. The sip fit was actually for the Meridian and in my experience, not awful. It looked like I could expect some moderate icing between 9,000 and 17,000 feet along my route, with it being worse to the west with freezing levels as low as seven to 9,000 feet. I suspected that, like most Class B airports, they would descend me into Dulles early, so it was possible I would be below it rather than having to descend through it. It's also worth mentioning that though the Meridian is certified for flight into known ice, this is really is a means to get you out of icing. In planning this flight, I knew that I would encounter it mostly in the en route and in the descent phase, which is always better than in the climb because it's easier to keep the ice on the protected part of the wing in the descent as opposed to in a climb. In the descent, if it was really bad, I knew I could drop quickly below 9,000 feet and let it melt off. That would be my bailout option. Of concern in this regard, when I briefed the flight, was a PIRAP from a 737 reporting moderate rime ice between flight level 210 and 180, as well as some reports of light to moderate icing in the area of DC. A look at the next rad with the four flight expected routing demonstrated some of that showery activity that undoubtedly had ice at the top of the clouds. The GTAF depicted all of this nicely. There wasn't a whole lot of turbulence to speak of, and the NOTAMs were significant only for the closure of one center, one inner center, which was important because that runway is closest to the FBO and the taxi lengths at Dulles can otherwise be considerable. So I filed direct at 20,000 feet, fully expecting that that route would change. One of the most interesting things about a turbine compared to a piston engine is that the highest temperature the engine hits in flight is usually during the start. The start sequence begins by establishing an adequate flow of air through the turbine so that when you light off the fuel, there's already a flow of cool air through the firebox and the engine doesn't melt. That flow of air isn't measured directly, but is measured through the speed of rotation of the compressor section of the engine, otherwise known as the NG. When you reach an NG over 13%, which is about 4,000 RPM, it's safe to introduce fuel. The start sequence then continues with a combination of the starter generator continuing to spin the compressor, as well as the growing flow of hot air from the burning of jet fuel. If enough flow isn't established, then you get the dreaded hot start, which is where the temperature between the compressor and the power turbine is exceeded and parts of the engine can actually melt. 
Something like a poorly charged battery or a faulty starter can cause this. And this is also why turbine engines get started facing into the wind. The temperature to monitor for this is the ITT or the interturbine temperature. Okay, point departure. Uh, good afternoon, Ready 99 Delta Alpha uh, is just off of uh, Manio through uh, 1,600, climbing 3,000 IFR to uh, Dulles. November 902 Niner Delta Alpha, squad 5337. 5337, 9 Delta Alpha. Del November 900 Delta Alpha, you're right at contact, 3 miles northwest of Manny Altitude, in the case 3000. A from 9 Delta Alpha. And November 900 Delta Alpha, you're clear to uh, Washington Dulles International Airport as filed, coming and maintain 10,000. Okay, clear to Dulles is filed up to a 10,000, 9 Delta Alpha. Niner Delta Alpha contact Oceana approach one two three point niner. One two three nine or nine Delta Alpha, thanks for your help. Oceana approach I'm already in nine to nine Delta Alpha is four thousand nine hundred climbing one zero thousand uh, direct Dulles. Twenty nine two nine Delta Alpha Oceana approach uh, afternoon L terminus three zero one nine or three zero one nine or nine Delta Alpha. We've been cleared up to uh, flight level 200, and uh, we're going direct right now. I expect that uh, we're going to end up getting the uh, Code 5 arrival. So I've dialed that up in my iPad, and uh, I'm sure as soon as they hand us off to uh, Washington Center that uh, we'll get a reroute. For now, uh, we're cleared up to our filed altitude, and uh, so far, so good. So uh, I'm noticing now that there are a few more... Um, higher ups for uh, icing. They flight rhyme icing at uh, 20,000. Uh, well, so that's right along my route, so we'll see. Not, not a big surprise. My guess is we'll be a little lower by then, but uh, help to be prepared. Uh, it looks like there's some precip now over Richmond. Nothing convective. All right, level and off, flight level 200. Washington Center, Brady, 99 Delta Alpha, flight level 200 direct. Number 9 or 2, 9 or Delta Alpha, Washington Center, expect reading. Uh, well, whenever you're ready, 9 Delta. In position direct to NABS, November Alpha, Bravo, Bravo, Sierra, and fly the Code 5 arrival to Dulles. Okay, NABS for the Code 5 for 9 Delta Alpha. Okay, so to do that, we go into flight plan, hit procedure, select arrival, it's going to be the code 5, and uh, I think it's off of Richmond, Hello? nope, it's off of uh, Flat Rock, so we're going to load that, and we're going to go direct to NAVS. just starting to get in this area of weather and uh, I know there's icing ahead so I'm just going to go ahead and turn the prop heat and the stall heat on now. Washington Center, bringing 929 Delta Alpha, flight level 200. Over 929 Delta Alpha, Washington Center. And we're just starting to pick up a little run. Uh, we're hustling down to try to make it to Zika 23. Okay, so now we're picking up a little bit more. A little bit more on the ice. Our 403 Alpha Alpha contact Washington Center 126.8. I think that's because we're just skimming the tops of these uh, clouds. 26.8. Which is always the worst. I just put the uh, windshield anti ice on. Because the radius of the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer is so much smaller compared to the wing, the tail gets ice first and is usually where I look for icing first. 
I judge the degree of ice on the wings by comparing the accumulation to the stall strip on the leading edge of the wing, which is about a quarter inch in width. The other very important factor in all of this was that there was absolutely no change in airspeed. Had there been any diminution in performance, I would have immediately asked for a descent into warmer air. Center and okay, so we're clear down to one three thousand. I know that there's uh, from pilot reports that there's no that the icing really begins at one five thousand. And I also know that the should have maintained flight level one nine zero on board three six three. The freezing level is around nine thousand feet. So what I'm gonna I am gonna do though is I'm gonna disconnect the autopilot and just check the uh, elevator, make sure there's no bridging, ice bridging and uh, put it back on. But you can see there's like, uh, it's like paint on the wings. It's just rime ice. And I'd say that's about, not even an eighth of an inch. Meridian 929 Delta Alpha, checking in 13000 with hotel. Meridian 929 Delta Alpha, stomach approach, welcome. Meridian 3018, center maintain 10. Christian, center maintain 8000. Great, uh, 3018 down to 8000, Delta Alpha. Atomic, Saratoga, 833, Florida member, 5,500. All right, so now I know that's well below. 833, Florida member, Atomic approach, Richmond, now freezing level. So, uh, 018, three, As it warms up, all this is just going to melt off. But we're at 12,000 feet, and it's still minus it's 5 degrees out. The winds were favoring runway 30, and I've landed on that before, even though that's Dulles' primary departure runway, so I thought I'd at least try. I wonder if I can get the visual to 30 for 9 Delta Alpha. Yep, stand by with that request. Number 9 Delta Alpha, where are you parking today? We're going to a jet for 9 Delta Alpha. I'm going to get you on the left side there, just like one left. Okay, one left, 9 Delta Alpha. This ended up being just about as good, and was as close to the FBO as I was going to get. Number 9 Delta Alpha, when able to see direct to center, center the initial fix right one left. Direct center, maintain 4,000. Okay, 9 Delta Alpha is direct center, and four, we'll go down to 4,000. Delta Tower, ready in 929 Delta Alpha is center. 929 Delta Alpha, Delta Star. Uh, when 3106, runway 19 low. Pushing a one left to the land. One left, clear to land, 9 Delta Alpha. Okay, so the glide slope's capturing. We're below gear extension speed. Gear's coming down. Okay, we've got all three. We're below flaps one. Manual, manual, landing lights on. Let's pull this back now to uh, our approach torque, which is about 380. If we were landing with all that ice on the wings, so here comes the second notch. If we were landing with all that ice on the wings, I would definitely uh, keep my speed up and go no more than uh, t uh, 20 degrees of flaps. But I can see, as you can see, that the uh, ice is completely melted. We're at 14 degrees outside, not surprisingly. So uh, this will be just a completely normal approach. All right, so manual, manual. Lights, hots. We have 20 degrees of flaps, three green, and uh, the cabin is nicely depressurized. Okay, we'll give the, uh, let's put in the last notch. I'm going to hand fly the rest. Fire, sir. There is a heavy one, 787. He's on a eight mile right base, the farm of one right. He's out of 2,500. See uh, Udvar Hazi, the uh, Air and Space Museum off the uh, right wing. Just fantastic. If you ever get a chance, it's definitely worth the trip. East of Funnel is a beautiful helicopter, 1,400. We've got three green. Full flaps. Minimums. Minimums. Bridge 
Good evening, Doug Sarsa. Caution waves traveling from the heavy one 787 on the four mile final. Wind 3203, runway one right, clear line. While this was not the first show that we've done since the last Fastlane episode six months ago, the shows have still just been coming at a trickle. Not enough to carry the momentum that we left off at a year ago, but also just enough to keep our chops sharp and quite frankly the band together. You look in her eyes, the music begins to play. The room itself was a combination of smaller room with a great vibe and local stage with a national presence. The Birchmere is a stop on the touring circuit for some major acts, and it was fun to count that notch on our list of famous venues that we've graced with our Eagles rendition. I'm not sure we would even have been invited here if the performance world hadn't, in essence, ended a year ago. And it was a year ago, almost to the date, that the rug got pulled out from us. That was the day that I I locked myself in because we flew home yeah. the very next day. That's right. And then I was, I've been locked, pretty right. much locked in now since well, the stilts came. <laughs> You know, it, there's a lot to be said for, hey, let, let's let, no. put our toe out. Let's just see. Let's right. try it. A place like this that's so, the vision right. that's so on top of right. the situation, it, it's not too bad, but there's always that little voice in the back here, you know, a little scared. Yeah. And some of us, despite heroic efforts, still managed to get sick and survived unscathed to tell about it. it, was, it was no joke. No, no joke at all. It, it was two weeks that scared the hell out of me. Yeah. I, I mean, it just, because you did not know from night to night, day to day, hour to hour, what was going to happen next. Right. This virus was like trying to find a kink in the armor, trying right. to find the opening. And, and it found your, your, your goatee instead. It found my goatee. That's, that, right. that's what's protected. That's why I grew this. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Girardi manages the bookings uh, for the Birchmere. We've Birch been Mayor. able to be open since July the 10th right. at uh, 200 capacity. And happily, the public has still come out. Uh, it's been rigorous because the usual number of artists that are out there just are not touring, but happily we have bands that right. are like Eagle Mania, right. which is great. <laughs> But the trauma of it all is very palpable. The room was limited in its capacity, despite the fact that we sold out two shows in one night with no promotion or advertising on our part. So many of the artists that we depend on are not on tour. Mm -hmm. uh, our business, uh, in terms of the volume, has dropped hugely. Right. Um, How much staff have you had? Uh, we've had to cut back on the staff quite a bit. On the upside, this just confirms my suspicion that the desire to watch live music is stronger than ever. That said, the venues are really, really hurting. We'll go, well, I think we'll go back to full capacity after Labor Day. Yeah. The issue is how many of the bands that are scheduled for that time right. will remain on the books uh -huh. or still feel squeamish about touring. Right. Uh, right now, the sense I get is that they will stay put. Right in terms of if they're in the schedule after Labor Day. Up until then, it's going to be individual choices on right. the part of all the bands. Right. Even though we felt a little like guinea pigs, it felt good to be on a stage and also to play a part in the recovery of the music business, if only on a microcosmic level.
So while I woke up the next morning to some pretty straightforward VFR conditions at both ends, the flight back to Dare County was going to have an interesting quirk to it, demonstrating yet again why I enjoy making this vlog. It's interesting how sometimes the seemingly easiest flight can have its own challenges. Conditions were forecasted to stay that way for the morning with the addition of some slightly gusty winds around my destination. This was due to a high pressure area that was moving into the area behind a couple of weak cold fronts. The graphical TAF confirmed the presence of widespread VFR conditions in the mid-Atlantic and this became an important piece of information to have as the morning wore on. So here's where it got interesting. I filed using four flights expected routing, this route, which was pretty much aligned with the direct route between Dulles and Dare County. I've demonstrated this before here on the channel, how useful PDC through four flight is. In a nutshell, you get a text of the current ATIS plus an email with your clearance so that all you do is call up ground and ask for taxi. I was happy to see that the PDC clearance was consistent with what I had filed. All right, Fleet Air ECS. Torpedo to go, altimeters are both set, uh, flight plan we have in, radios are set, transponder codes in, uh, and we're, as I said, we're going to expect runway 30, and uh, we'll stick it in heading mode with the toga pressed, just double checking the flight controls, great, we're not going to have any trim, now we're on the rudder and we're in takeoff position, I think we're ready to taxi, so I'm just going to... So here's where it became a little unusual. When I called ground for taxi, remember, I was issued a pre-departure clearance so I didn't need to call clearance delivery. They redirected me to clearance first, presumably to receive an amended clearance. And November 929 Delta Alpha, this is going to be a full route clearance. Are you ready to copy? Affirmative 9 Delta Alpha. November 9 Delta Alpha, you are cleared to the Mike Quebec India Airport via the Capital One departure. Radar vectors to Raza intersection, which is Romeo, Alpha, Zulu, Zulu, Alpha. Direct Wooly. Direct Agard. Victor, 4-4. Four, four. Donil intersection, which is Delta, Oscar, November, India, Lima. Direct Sierra, Bravo, Yankee. Direct Charlie, Charlie, Victor. Direct to airport. On departure, maintain 3,000. Expect flight level 210. One minutes after departure. Squawk 4652. Information Fox Rod is current. Okay, 99 Delta. So let's look at that. Here is what I filed, was told to expect, and what the PDC clearance gave me. And here is what it got rerouted to. This route added another 130 miles, more than 50% of the entire route, and was considerably longer time-wise. I decided to accept the clearance with the expectation that the departure controllers would see the absurdity of this route and give me a more direct route. And this has been my experience in the past, and I had no reason to think it would be different here. Zulu 1 and ready to taxi with Fox Run. Zulu 929 Delta Alpha, Delta Conway 30, sir, taxi, zero, taxiway Zulu, and hold short of Alpha. Zulu hold short of Alpha, 9 Delta Alpha. Runway heading, uh, clear for takeoff, 9 Delta Alpha. 12955, for United, uh, 2198. Sponsor 79, chain, 51, 34.42. Hey, 60 knots. Sponsor 79, Delta Alpha, clear. 5 to 8 3 0 volunteer 79. I'll wait a little bit on the gear, since we have such a nice long runway. Okay, gear coming up. On to Eperon. And we'll stick it in flight level change. We're runway heading. Stomach departure, uh, good morning, ready 929, Delta Alpha 1900, climbing 3000, uh, runway heading. 929, Delta Alpha, come to departure radar contact, climb and maintain 4000. 4009, Delta Alpha. After about 10 minutes of flying in the wrong direction, I decided to press the matter a little with a request for either better routing or a vector to a waypoint more in line with my desired route that was out of the special flight rules area and the Class B from where I could proceed VFR. 
I only felt comfortable doing this because I knew what to expect from both the weather and I had studied the airspace pretty specifically beforehand. Yeah, Potomac uh, 9 Delta Alpha request. November 9, do 9 Air Delta Alpha, Potomac. Yeah, 9 Delta Alpha, if you can give me uh, uh, direct to Martinsburg, I can cancel and uh, go uh, VFR from there. November 929 Delta Alpha. I'm sorry, you said Mike Romeo Bravo? Yeah, because uh, our routing is just, I mean, it's taking me in the opposite direction for almost as long as the entire course. So if you can get me to uh, Martinsburg, which is in the general direction of where I'm going, then I can go ahead and cancel and uh, and fly the rest direct. Where are you going, sir? Going to Dare County. That's Mike, Quebec, India. Okay, um, give me one second. Do you want to, uh, let me ask you this, are you canceling IFR at this time or are you still staying IFR? Well, if you can give me better routing, then uh, I'll stay IFR. I'd prefer that, but uh, with the routing as it is now, it's just, it'd just be easier to go VFR for 9 Delta Alpha. Okay, if you'd like to stay IFR, the routing that you have is the routing that it would be. If you'd like to go VFR, then, you know, obviously you can do that, but IFR routing is the one that you have. Got it. Okay, well, then in that case, if you can give me direct to uh, Martinsburg, or at least out of the uh, Bravo, then I can, uh, I can I can fly the rest via far for 9 Delta Alpha. Sure, one second. November 9 Delta Alpha, turn left direct Martinsburg. If, uh, are you prepared to cancel IFR at this time? Uh, affirmative, 9 Delta Alpha. November 9 Delta Alpha, your IFR cancellation is received. Do you want to go at 8,500 or uh, 10,500? Uh, I was actually going to go 16,500. Okay, for now, uh, maintain uh, via far at... Uh, Let's start with 10,500 and uh, the next controller will have higher for you. Roger that. Uh, 10,500, direct Martinsburg, 9 Delta Alpha. Potomac, uh, good morning, Meridian 929 Delta Alpha, 10,500 uh, VFR, and we're currently direct Martinsburg. Number 99 Delta Alpha, Potomac approach Delta Thunder 8308. What's your plan here? You just want to skirt around the Bravo to go to your destination? Affirmative, 9 Delta Alpha. Number 9 Delta Alpha, Roger. So Potomac, uh, with your permission, 9 Delta Alpha, I'd like to proceed direct Linden. Number 9 Delta Alpha, that is, that's approved, you can proceed direct Linden. Great, thank you, 9 Delta Alpha, direct Linden. At uh, Piper 9 or Delta Alpha, climb maintain 13,500. To 13,500, 9 Delta Alpha. Potomac, I'm ready at 9 to 9 Delta Alpha. It's okay, I'm going to take uh, 20 degrees to the right to stay out of the SFRA for 9 Delta Alpha. Uh, 9 Delta Alpha, approved as requested. And Piper 9 or Delta Alpha. Um, just give you a heads up. Once you get a little bit closer down there towards like Brooks VOR, that's Bro Bravo Romeo Victor. Might have to put you on a heading just to keep you out of the arrival corridor for uh, the guys coming in the national. Uh, but uh, that's just the game plan for right now. Okay, no problem. 9 Delta Alpha. Washington Center, good morning. We're near 99 Delta Alpha VFR 13500 and assigned heading of a 190. Number 9290 Delta Alpha, Washington Center, Richmond Altimeter 3036. 369 Delta Alpha. Number 9290 Delta Alpha, uh, resume on navigation. Okay, 9 Delta Alpha is going to go direct destination and stay at our current altitude. I see a little cloud layer here. I can go above it on or below it. Flight level and three, uh, four, given that zero. we're we're still a ways out, but I know from the next red. 2387. There's a little bit of weather ahead, down. even though our destination is reporting clear. I'm going to go below it. And center 9 Delta Alpha is descending 11500 to uh, stay below a deck. Uh, number 9290 Delta Alpha, Roger. Alpha approach. Uh, good morning. Ready at 929 Delta Alpha is 11500 VFR direct Manio. 929 Delta Alpha, no, we've got 103035. 359 Delta. Okay, so uh, we have the approach to runway 5 loaded. It's a little gusty, and um, I'm just uh, basically putting myself on the approach, even though we're VFR. Always good to back up any landing with an approach. Jerry County traffic at Meridian is on a 7 mile straight in final runway 5. Thank you, coming down. Manual, manual, lights, 20 degrees of flaps, three green, and uh, we're totally depressurized. 
Dare County traffic, Meridian is on a two mile straight in final runway five, Dare County. 500. Let's go fl full flaps, final check, three green. Minimums, minimums. If you've made it this far, you clearly like this kind of content, and if you feel like supporting the channel for more material, please click the like button. Lots more to come on the channel as we get busier, and until next time, it's life in the fast lane.